In the first scene, we see a young boy hiding from monsters. He manages to survive not being eaten. He has a compass with him and he uses this to navigate his way to a stronghold. He is welcomed to the Fenrir, humanity's last stronghold. He is to take an exam that will determine his qualification to join the anti-Aragami punitive force known as the Divine Eaters. The scientists taking the exam are surprised that someone from outside the wall would show compatibility as a new type. In a flashback scene, we see some scientists working on something new. Back in the present day, the young boy places his hand in a machine. Cells identical to those of the Aragami are then implanted into his body. A bracelet will be fused with his flesh and he will live with it for the rest of his life. As the process continues, the boy is asked if he wishes to continue, and he says yes. His determination to fight the Yaragami is very strong. He ends up passing the exam and he is congratulated for his success. The young man's name is Utsugi Lenka, and he is the protagonist of this story. Up next, reports come in that the Aragami is attacking. The second unit is assembled to engage the enemies. During the tussle, Lenka collides with another new recruit, Kuda. He apologizes, but Kuda doesn't even take offense in the first place. Lenka believes that they will be assigned to one of the units going to fight the Aragamis, but Major Amamiya arrives and informs the duo that they will be training instead. She appears to be a strict woman and doesn't go back on her orders. Kuda and Lenka immediately get close as they make their way to the training room. The duo's first simulation training session appears to be a failure because they are still fresh off the bat. However, Lenka shows promising signs. After the first training, Lenka steps out, and he is horrified when he sees one of the soldiers return in pain. Lenka asks Amamiya for permission to get back in the training room, and she accepts. Lenka wants to fight the Aragmus as soon as possible. During the training session, branch director Shiksal enters the situation room to ask Amamkia for an update concerning Lenka. Amamiya confesses that Lenka is exceptional, also a risk at the same time. The director tells her to handle Lenka very well because it is rare to come by new types. The director leaves the room afterward. However, Amamiya believes that Lenka is not not ready. Later on, Kuta takes Lenka to the engineering department. He meets the chief maintenance engineer, Kusunoki Lika. Lika informs Lenka that she just finished up with his Divine Arc. The Divine Arc is what the Divine Eaters use as their weapons, and it is unique to each individual. Lenka will be able to use the weapon starting tomorrow. The following day, Lenka is walking through the hallway when he hears the latest reports. The Divine Eaters from the first unit have just successfully detached a Vajra core. He finds out that the first unit is awesome. They have become a force to reckon with since Rindu took over. Later that night, the alarm goes off. It turns out that Aragamis have invaded the outside settlement. They dispatch a unit to battle the enemies. Seconds later, they find out that another batch of Aragamis have invaded the opposite side of the wall. To get a unit from the opposite side will take at least 20 minutes, and it might be too late already. Lenka enters the Situation Room and asks Amamiya to send a unit from the base. This will be much better. It soon dawns on Lenka that there is no unit currently at the base that can be dispatched to fight the enemy. He begs Amamiya to send him instead, but she refuses. She says she has no intention of sending him to his death. Lenka watches the screen and sees the amount of damage done by the enemies. He couldn't stand it, and decided to defy orders. He takes off his uniform jacket and runs towards the weapons room to get his arc. Amamiya tries to use a remote authentication to stop him, but Lenka grabs the weapon before he can be stopped. He makes his way outside the base, and manages to escape every obstacle thrown at him. Amamiya informs the director about this, and also adds that she will be sending other Divine Eaters to get him. In another flashback scene, we get to find out that the branch director is among the scientists working on the newly discovered cell. Lenka makes it to the site of the battle. Just as he arrives there, a Divine Eater, Eric, is attacked fatally by an Aragami. Eric is about to be terminated, but Lenka steps in and stops them. The Aragamis turn their attention towards Lenka. Lenka tries to attack, but he is clumsy and ends up dropping his arc out of fear. Eric tells him to run because he stands no chance without his weapon. Lenka is not ready to give up and he attacks the Aragami with a plank instead. The Aragamis chases after him, and Lenka would have been dead meat if not for the timely arrival of the first unit. The first unit is made of two guys and one girl, Soma, Sakuya, and Rindu. The trio cuts through the Aragamis like butter. Suddenly, Lenka sees a young girl in danger. He grabs his arc, but there is no way he would get to the girl before the Aragami kills her. He unconsciously transforms his arc into a blaster and fires it at the Aragami to save the girl. Sakuya and the rest of her unit are surprised when they see this. Amamiya and the branch director also witnessed this from the base, and they were impressed. Another Aragami attacks Lenka, but he has no idea how to turn his weapon back to a blade. He is saved by Sakuya. Just then, a bigger and stronger type of Aragami known as Vajra arrives. Their mission just got a whole lot more complicated because of this. Rindu dishes out instructions. Sakuya is to take care of the weaker Aragamis to serve as a distraction to the Vajra. He tells Lenka to hide with Eric, 
but Lenka refuses. Lenka is given a gun to protect himself while they fight the Aragamis. Lenka shoots at the Vajra. He gets too close and the monster delivers a powerful electric jolt that knocks out Lenka. Lenka is rushed back to the base and the doctors do a lot to make sure that he doesn't die. Later on, Lenka wakes up to find himself in a cell. Amamiya is standing outside the cell, and she tells Lenka that he is being detained for defying orders. He is to stay there until the board makes their decision. Lenka wants to know what happened after he passed out, but Amamiya walks away without telling him. Amamiya finds Rindu hanging around the cell area. She can clearly see that Rindu is worried about the kid. She gives him the compass she found inside his uniform jacket. It is supposed to mean something, but we don't know that yet. Later on, we see the branch director having a meeting with the board. They are doubtful that Lenka can live up to their expectations. There's also the doubt that Lenka cannot wield the powerful arc given to him. The board then informs Shiksal the other new type is en route from the Russian branch. The director wonders if there is any need for two, and the board replies that it is never too much. Shiksal tells the board to extend his thanks to the Russian branch director. Shortly afterward, Rindu visits Lenka in his cell. He tells Lenka that he was out for two days. Lenka is pretty sure that they won the battle, because Rindu is alive. Rindu reveals that they did take down the Vajra, but Eric died during the battle. Meanwhile, we see the new type from the Russian branch inside the transport plane. The new type from the Russian branch is a lady and her name is Elisa. She is accompanied by her doctor, Oguruma. Elisa is pretty confident that there is no one who can wield an arc like she does. She doesn't care if the Far East branch has a new type of its own because she thinks of herself as the absolute best. Back in the Far East branch, Rindu narrates how Eric died. After Lenka gets knocked out, Rindu manages to carry him on his shoulder before the Vajra finishes him off. Other Divine Eaters also arrive to support the first unit. Together they take down the giant monster. Rindu delivers a fatal blow that cuts the monsters in half. After this, the citizen that Lenka saved tells the team to extend her greetings when he wakes up. Lenka is prepped and ready to be airlifted out of there when the Vajra uses the little life he has left to launch a fatal attack on him. Eric jumps in between the Vajra and Lenka. Eric is impaled and he dies from his wounds. After hearing this, Lenka falls to his knees. He realizes that Eric died to save him. Rindu returns Lenka's compass and asks if it is accurate. Lenka gives no reply before Rindu leaves. Later on, Shiksal informs Amamiya that the board is thinking of revoking Lenka's status as a new type. The Far East branch is the founder of the Aegis project and this will be a huge loss to them if it happens. He asks Amamiya for ideas, but she too doesn't seem to know the way forward. Shortly afterward, we see Rindu and Amamiya preparing for Eric's funeral. While they are discussing, it is revealed that the duo are sisters. After the funeral, the rest of the Divine Eaters show their empathy towards the death of their comrade. While they are discussing, Rindu learns from one of them that Lenka attacked an Aragami without his arc while he was trying to save Eric. Rindu is surprised, and he says what Lenka did brings about memories of someone he knows. The person was also reckless, just like him. Rindu then goes to Lenka's cell to confirm if what he heard was the truth. Lenka says he couldn't just wait around for Eric to die because he was unarmed. He begs Rindu to teach him how to fight, protect, and make the right decisions. Moments later, reports come in that Elisa's transport is being attacked by a horde of Aragamis. The first unit will be dispatched to safely rescue her to the base. However, Soma is out on another mission. The unit is short of one man, and they need a replacement. Rindu wastes no time in suggesting that Lenka replace Soma for the mission. Amamiya is reluctant to agree, but she agrees because she has no choice. She tells Rindu that Lenka will be put under surveillance. She goes to Lenka's cell to bail him out. She tells Lenka that she has just given him the opportunity to prove to the board that he is worth something. Lenka says he will make things right. Rindu informs Lenka that he only gives three instructions. Don't die, run if your life is threatened, hide, and wait for your chance to kill the enemy. Bro said he had just three instructions, but he ended up mentioning four. He even adds another one where he tells Lenka not to get distracted while he is in battle. Lenka joins the unit and they move out immediately. Another flashback scene shows the scientist getting excited that the cell is able to replicate massively. Meanwhile, Elisa has decided to take on the Aragamis by herself. On their way to the mission site, Rindu reminds Lenka that he will not be getting another chance. He needs to make this count. He also informs him that the Divine Eater they are going to rescue is a new type like him. The unit soon arrives there and they are shocked at the number of Aragamis attacking the transport plane. They look down to see only Elisa fighting the monsters. They get her on the radio to inform her of their mission. Rindu tells Elisa that they are ready to cover her escape. She is to abandon the plane and join them back to the base. Elisa says she doesn't need their help and continues to face the monsters on her own. Rindu and Sakuya are both ready to ignore her to fight the monsters by herself, 
but Lenka doesn't agree. He picks up his arc to assist her. Rindu and Sakuya follow suit. The trio provides aerial support from their chopper. While they are doing so, they discover that Elisa is out of ammo. The team believes that Elisa has no way out. Lenka is surprised when she transforms her arc and devours an aragami. Rindu explains to him the physics behind how Elisa is able to consume the monster. Elisa converts the devoured monster into ammo to continue with her fight. Just then, some of the aragami start to evolve. They call on more monsters to join the horde. The flashback scene reveals how the cells started to call on each other while they were still under study. Back in the present day, Rindu gives out a new set of instructions. He wants Sakuya to stay in the chopper and give them cover fire. He and Lenka will jump on the plane to assist Elisa. Rindu tells Elisa that she needs to come with them, but she ignores him and jumps into the plane instead. Rindu tells Lenka to follow her and he does. Elisa hides behind something and attacks Lenka the moment he steps into the plane. She tells Lenka that she cannot leave the aircraft. Elisa makes her way into the plane's deck and Lenka follows. He is shocked when he realizes that there are still people on the plane. Elisa's doctor and several others are still on the plane. They are alive but some are wounded and are receiving first aid treatment. Elisa promises everyone on the plane that she will get them to the Far East branch no matter what it takes. Lenka is surprised as to why Elisa didn't tell them before. She argues that the people on the plane are not listed among their mission objectives so she doesn't want to bother them. Lenka contacts Rindu to tell him that circumstances have changed. Lenka wants them to get the whole transport safely to the Far East branch. Upon hearing this, Elisa decides to join forces with them to defeat the monsters efficiently. The plan is to eliminate the evolved ones first, before bouncing on the rest of the horde. Sakuya stays in the chopper to provide aerial support and also warn them of impending danger. During the battle, Lenka runs out of ammo. Suddenly, he does something amazing. He is able to transform his arc into a devourer to devour one of the aragamis and convert it into ammo for his arc. This surprises Elisa because she has always believed that no one would be able to wield an arc as she does. The team continues to cut the monsters like butter, and Lenka seems to have gotten the hang of it. He fights the monsters more efficiently than before. He is able to transform his arc anytime he wants, and he eliminates the monsters in style. Soon afterwards, the unit finishes off the whole horde of the Aragami. The transport is safe, and the mission is considered a success. Rindu communicates with the Far East branch to inform them that they have no casualties, and everyone including Elisa is en route. After the call, Rindu faces Elisa and he points out that the authorities really do care about her. Suddenly, Sakuya shouts on the radio to inform Rindu and the rest that an oracle is forming in the distance. She reveals that it is something very huge, and it is headed their way. Rindu quickly tells Sakuya to put the chopper on autopilot and get out of there. The chopper will act as a decoy to mask the aircraft's position from whatever it is that is out there. Their prayer is for the aircraft to get out of range before it is discovered. Sakuya does as she is told, and she joins the rest of the team aboard the aircraft. Just then, a very giant and enormous aragami appears in the clouds. The monster continues in its own way, because it does not see the aircraft. Rindo tells Lenka that it is best to steer clear of Aragamis of its type. This shocks Lenka, and all he can do is mutter. He just stands there and continues looking into the sky. Now, in the flashback scene, the cells break out of the glass containers and form one big organism. The scientists are thrown into a bit of turmoil on what report they are to send to the higher-ups. They are scared that the experiment and research will be shut down. Back in the present day, Amamiya takes Lenka and Elisa to see the branch director. The director introduces himself to Elisa and Lenka, because this is the first time Lenka will also be seeing him. He says his name is Johannes von Schicksal, the director of the Far East branch. He welcomes Elisa to the branch. He tells the duo that the fate of humanity rests on new types like themselves. He is happy to inform Lenka that insubordination charges against him have been dropped because of his performance and his role in saving Elisa. He discharges the two by telling them that they are depending on them. After leaving the office, Amamiya takes the duo to join up with Kuta. He tells the trio that they will be assigned to the first unit. They are now to take orders from the team captain, Rindu. Rindu tells the new recruits to rest well because their tasks begin the next day. After their senior colleagues have left, Kuta suggests that the trio visit the town since they have an off day. Elisa doesn't answer and just walks away. Lenka initially says he wants to train, but later agrees to follow Kuta to town. Elisa visits her doctor to get her usual meds. She tells the doctor that she somehow sees herself in Lenka. He has the same horror eyes as she does. Moments later, Kauta and Lenka make it to town. The town is made of small houses that are packed together. While they are there, Lenka sees a truck distributing food, and he asks Kuta to explain. Kuta explains that food and other essentials are distributed to the citizens of Fenrir every day. Lenka doesn't know this because he is from outside the walls. The duo soon gets to the house where Kuta is going. It turns out that the house belongs to Kuta's mom. His mother is very happy to see him, 
Kuda introduces Lenka to his mom, and also tells her that he has been assigned to a unit. His mother immediately gets scared because she knows that Kuda will start going out to the field. Kuda tells his mother that he can't stay long, and he turns back to leave. His mother looks sad and scared. He begs Kuda to come back home safely. Lenka can see the worry on her face. As they walk through the town, Kuda makes mention of Aegis. Lenka doesn't know what Aegis is, so he decides to show him. The duo stands on the fence and looks into the distance. Kuda shows Lenka the island standing in the distance. He says the island is called Aegis. The Aegis project is a plan to transform the entire island into a shelter. A shelter that can never be attacked by Aragamas. The island is humanity's last hope. The shelter will also be big enough to contain every person on Earth. However, something is needed to complete the shelter. They need to take down the Aragamis and bring back their cores. The cores are what is being used to construct Aegis. The following day, the first unit rolls out to find and eliminate Aragamis. Rindu says they will be going in pairs. Elisa and Rindu will be together. Sakuya and Lenka will be together. Lastly, Kuta will be with Soma. Their target for the day is to hunt six Aragamis known as Jiboro Jiboro. Each team gets to take down two Jiboro Jiboro. They are to extract the cores after defeating them too. Soon afterward, the unit makes it to the Aragami's den. Lenka and Sakuya take down their first mark. Lenka uses his blade to devour it to get the core easily. On the other hand, Alyssa is acting all commando, and she takes down the first target by herself. Kuda is still clumsy because it is his first day on the field, and Soma has to come in to save him. Before the day runs out, the unit manages to reach their target of six Aragamis. They achieve this amidst hard work. It is getting late and the team decides to head back to the base. On their way back, they run into some people asking for help. Rindu stops the vehicle to take in the citizens. The people thank Rindu and his team for stopping and saving them. The man who appears to be their leader says they have already given up hope. They are heading to the Far East branch, but they have lost more people than they count. One of the affected people is a little girl, and Lenka offers her water to drink. She collects the bottle with thanks. She also shares the water with the rest of the people. They soon arrive at the wall. Rindu directs them to the civilian gate while they go in through the personnel's gate. Lenka and the rest are still getting their things in order when they hear the people begging the guards to allow them to enter. The guards refuse to allow them to enter. Lenka runs over there to ask why the guards are denying them access. The guards reveal that they do not pass the patch test. Only those with divine art compatibility and their families are permitted to enter Fenrir. There is nothing Lenka can do and he just stands there in disbelief. The group has no choice but to turn back and leave. As the gate closes behind them, the little girl looks back and stares into Lenka's eyes with tears in her eyes. In another flashback scene, Shixel writes a report that assures the higher-ups that their experiment is safe and it will guarantee the future of humanity. Continuing with the present day, Lenka enters the base but ignores the team and goes on his own way. Kuda tells them that Lenka is acting that way because he is from outside the walls too. It is hell outside the wall. It takes all you have got to survive outside the wall. The following day, Lenka goes to one of the IT people, Hibari. He needs to ask Hibari some questions. He asks Hibari when the Aegis project is scheduled to be completed. Lenka receives the shock of the moment when Hibari tells him that the project is currently at 0.06% complete. Tens of thousands of cores are required to complete the project. Lenka is still standing there looking all surprised and shocked when Soma arrives. Hibari tells Soma that the director is asking for him because he has a special mission for him. Before Soma leaves, he says some words of encouragement to Lenka. He lets him know that he has no other job but to eliminate the Aragamis to make things better for humanity. Later on, Amamiya calls Sakuya and the rest of the unit to inform them that they have a mission to embark on. Soma and Rindu are on a special mission, so they won't be available to join them. They are to go outside the wall to eliminate the Aragamis of their choice. Sakuya suggests that they go after the Gaboro Gaboro, but Lenka thinks they should take down a Vajra instead. Vajra drops more cores than Gaboro Gaboro, and that will be the best choice. Sakuya doesn't want to agree with Lenka because of the risk associated with going after a bigger Aragami. However, Kuta and Elisa tell Sakuya that they are ready to take on a Vajra. Sakuya accepts, but tells the team that they need to follow her instructions at all times. If she sees that the mission is getting dangerous, she will instruct them to retreat. Soon afterward, they arrive at the den of the Vajras. The team incapacitates one of them. Sakuya tells Kuta to finish off the monster, but Kuta's hands are shaking. Sakuya manages to say some words of encouragement to Kuta. She tells him to trust in himself, and also to trust in his arc. With Sakuya's words, Kuda is able to fire his weapon to finish off the monster. The other Vajra runs into a building and they chase after it. Suddenly a group of people runs out of the building. They are surprised that there are some people taking shelter in such dangerous places. 
Before they know it, they are already surrounded by at least three Vajras. The team tries to shield the people. Just then, a much larger Vajra arrives. The Vajra appears to be a mutant, and its color is darker compared to the usual Vajras. The mutant Vajra attacks the normal Vajras and eats them up. None of the team members except Elisa appears to have seen something like it before. Without thinking twice, Elisa goes after the Vajra instead of retreating. Sakuya instructs Lenka to go after Elisa and retrieve her. Sakuya tells the civilians to get away from the scene. The Vajra releases a burst of electricity from its body that renders Kuda and Sakuya helpless. Lenka looks in horror as the monster terminates the civilians one by one. Elisa goes after the monster to stop it from killing all the civilians. The Vajra easily knocks her out and sets its sights upon the civilians again. Lenka gets himself together. Lenka gets very angry, and his arm starts to show signs of mutation. He goes after the monster in rage, but he still does not pose a threat to the powerful monster. The Vajra repels Lenka's attack, and also injures him in the process. Lenka gets up again and goes after the monster. Lenka's whole body starts to show signs of mutation, but the monster doesn't seem to be worried. He easily breaks Lenka's arc into two. He impales Lenka with one of its spikes. Lenka is completely helpless as the monster bounces on the civilians and wipes all of them out. Elisa, who is already weak, gets there and fires her weapon at the monster. The monster lets go of Lenka and goes after Elisa. Kuta and Sakuya also get there to provide an escape route for Lenka and Elisa. Lenka manages to stand up. He finds Elisa and helps her up. He provides support for her as the duo walks together. The Vajra sights them again and he comes after them. Lenka realizes that they are at the mercy of the monster. He falls to the ground because he is exhausted already. Lenka is forced to say a word of prayer to the divine being to help them. The monster is about to get them when it steps on a thin line of bridge. The monster Elisa and Lenka all fall into the river below. In another flashback scene, some of the scientists are puzzled as to why the higher-ups allowed them to continue their research. Shiksel says the headquarters had better foresight and this is why they gave them the go-ahead. They even doubled their budget to make things better. The scientists still do not know what type of organism the cell will turn out to be. They even make jokes that the cell might be a mammalian. Shortly afterward, the scientists are called to a room by a military general. They are shown the image of some monsters that have been appearing over the course of a few months. Weapons have no effect on them. After the organisms were studied, they found out all of the organisms were a colony of cells, with a single-celled core. The new cell the scientists discovered is called the Oracle, and it has evolved. The general tells Shiksal and the rest of the scientists that their help is needed. Now in the present day, Sakuya manages to contact the HQ that they need help. The new types are missing. Back at the HQ, Amamiya and Hibari are doing everything they can to find Lenka and Elisa. They have been able to track them down via their bracelets, but their status is unknown. There are also no divine eaters that can be sent to rescue them. Amamiya thinks about sending a rescue unit after them, but they still need a divine eater to accompany them because of the nature of the location. Shortly afterward, Lenka wakes up inside the river. He looks to his side to see that Elisa is unresponsive. He gets her out of the water and resuscitates her. Elisa gasps back to life and Lenka heaves a sigh of relief. Elisa is alive, but she passes out again. Lenka gets her to a safe place. Later on, Elisa wakes up to find herself in a room. She looks around to see Lenka watching over her. She asks about the whereabouts of the Black Vajra, which she calls Pita. Lenka says he doesn't know. It seems that Elisa has a personal beef with the Vajra. She promises to eliminate the monster when she comes across it. Elisa asks for her Ark, but Lenka says he couldn't find it amidst the struggles. Elisa gets up to leave the room and find her weapon. Just then, Lenka falls unconscious. Elisa contemplates whether to attend to him or not. She finally makes the decision to care for him. She picks him up, cleans his wound, and gives him first aid. She finds out that Lenka's Ark is damaged. She moves closer to the Ark and touches it, but nothing happens. She hears a roar outside. She looks through the window to see a Vajra parading the area. Elisa starts to suffer from a severe headache. This prompts her to remember a memory that she doesn't like to remember. Young Elisa and her parents are seen playing a game of hide-and-seek. She finds a hiding spot. She is in hiding when the Black Vajra attacks. Elisa looks from her hiding place as the monster tears her parents into shreds and consumes them. This is the reason she has been suffering from trauma and taking medication. Elisa returns to her normal self to realize that a Vajra is upon her already. The Vajra goes after Elisa, but Lenka wakes up just in time to block the attack with his already damaged sword. Elisa freezes up at the sight of this. Lenka manages to grab her and jump out of the building before the Vajra eliminates the two of them. After settling for some minutes, Elisa is finally able to speak out. She asks if Lenka's wound is okay, and he says yes. Lenka asks if his art can be fixed. Elisa is not so sure about that because it appears to be severely damaged. Elisa says the Ark is dead already. She reveals that she touched the Ark while Lenka was out, but the Ark didn't react. 
No one except the wielder should be able to touch the Ark. The Ark attacks anyone who is not the wielder, but Lenka's Ark did nothing when she touched it. She concludes that the Ark is dead, and what remains is just a chunk of metal that is useless against Aragamas. However, they will be sure when they get back to base. The duo decides to go out and search for Elisa's Ark. They manage to avoid a whole load of monsters to get to the riverside. They finally make it there amidst all the challenges and struggles. They get there, and Elisa is relieved to find out that her Ark is still intact. Just as she picks up the weapon, a monster comes rushing over. Elisa would have eliminated the monster on a usual day, but she finds it hard to do so because she is still suffering from trauma. Seconds later, monsters converge on her position. Lenka stays in the distance, looking all helpless. Elisa falls to her knees and covers her ears out of extreme fear. Lenka summons courage and jumps in between the monsters and Elisa. He is ready to fight them with his already damaged arc. He tries to fend off the monsters, but he is knocked to the floor. Lenka is not ready to give up and he keeps getting up after every knock he takes. The monsters soon surround Lenka and Elisa without a way out. Lenka drops his sword and uses himself as a shield for Elisa. The monster comes after him ferociously. They are about to tear him up when a stun grenade appears out of nowhere. Rindu just arrived in time to save the day. He tells Lenka to pick up his weapon and be a man. This is the reason he became a Divine Eater in the first place. We are taken through another flashback scene. One of Shiksal's co-workers, Aisha finds the reports Shiksal sent to the higher-ups on his laptop. She finds out that Shiksal falsified the report to trick the government that everything is going fine. Shiksal tries to explain himself, but Aisha says there is no need for that. She totally understands why he did what he did. It seems that the duo actually have romantic feelings for each other. Shiksal falls to his knees crying, and Aisha holds his head to comfort him. Up next, Rindu contacts Kuda and Sakuya that he has found the two new types. Transmissions are bad, so they might not be able to get through to them for a while. He also tells them that the duo is wounded and they won't be going to the rendezvous point. After he is done talking to Sakuya and Kuta, Rindu tells Lenka and Alice to get up and start moving. He takes them to the top of a hill, which is filled with trees. Lenka is surprised to see the trees. The Aragamis basically eat everything they come across both organic and inorganic. He wants to touch one of the trees, but Ridno stops him. They soon get to a human settlement situated near a dam. Lenka is also surprised to see the young girl from before at the settlement. This is the same girl that Fenrir rejected her and her group from entering the base. Lenka finds the girl to ask her how she survived and made it to the shelter. She reveals that Rindu brought her there. They have also been growing crops at the shelter. Lenka approaches Rindu to ask him about what he just heard. Rindu tells Lenka that he has always gathered people who are denied access to Fenrir and brought them to the shelter. He didn't set it up, but he helped out. The leadership of the shelter meets with Rindu to tell him about their challenges. They tell him that an Aragami snuck into the compound not so long ago. Rindu immediately gets up to check the surroundings. He asks Lenka to escort him but tells Elisa to stay back. She is not herself yet, so it will be unwise for her to follow them. The duo goes to the shelter storage room. Lenka is surprised to see that everything inside the room is from the Far East Branch. Rindu has been collecting supplies from the Far East Branch to help the shelter. The duo goes to the woods together with a box full of ampules. Lenka gets to see why Rindu told him not to touch the trees. Lenka watches on as an aragami extends his spikes out of the tree and takes down an aragami wandering around. Rindu says the tree can take down regular size aragami without issues. Back at the shelter, Elisa is taking a shower. She is really suffering from the trauma affecting her. Rindu tries to explain how the tree came about. He tells Lenka that his divine arc is also an aragami. They have found a way to modify aragami cells to their own benefit too. Just then, a Vajra appears in the distance. It starts to take down the trees with ease. At the same time, another Aragami is attacking the shelter. Rindu tells Lenka to go back to the shelter and keep everyone safe. He orders Lenka not to die. He also advises him to trust his divine arc. Lenka gets to the shelter to find the Aragami attacking a group of civilians. He jumps to save them. He calls on Elisa for assistance, but Elisa is hiding out fear. She has locked herself inside a closet out of fear. Lenka realizes that no one is coming to help and everything is now on him. He uses a grenade to create a smokescreen to give himself and the civilians to get out of the Aragami's line of sight. They hide behind a wall for Lenka to plan his next move. Lenka finally gets an idea of how to get rid of the monster. He asks one of the residents to draw him a map of the area. After studying it, Lenka tells them that he plans to lure the monster into the lake. They will release the water in the dam afterward to wash it away. Lenka also needs the ampules to slow it down. The storage room is on the other side of the shelter. The civilians with Lenka split themselves into groups to help Lenka. While Lenka is engaging the monster, two people will go for the ampules. One of the two people going for the ampules will be the little girl. The other two will go to the dam to get it ready before Lenka pushes the monster inside the lake. 
Lenka is given a crossbow to help with his fight against the Aragami. The crossbow won't do much, but it will still serve as a weapon for him. The groups get down to business immediately. The girl and her partner manage to get the ampules and they start moving towards Lenka. In their struggle to get to Lenka, the girl's partner gets trapped under rubble thrown at them by the Aragami. It is left for the girl to get the ampules to Lenka. The girl manages to get within throwing distance of Lenka. She throws one of the ampules to Lenka. Lenka uses the crossbow to fire the ampule at the Aragami. It appears to be working because the Aragami reacts negatively to it. Lenka gets more ampules and continues to shoot them at the monster to try and get it into the lake. One of the ampules misses, and the monster manages to get a foothold again. It comes after Lenka, and it's about to deliver a finishing blow when Lenka remembers Rindu's words about trusting his arc. Lenka picks up the ampule, pushes it into his arc, and this creates a chain reaction. The reaction births an aragami from the arc. Lenka is able to push the aragami into the lake with this. The other group activates the dam, and the water pushes the aragami away from the area. After the dust has settled, Rindu also arrives. This shows that he has defeated the Vajra he was fighting. Lenka thanks him for his words of encouragement because he couldn't have done it without him. He is also glad that his Ark is not dead. In a flashback scene, Shiksal and his fellow researchers discover something that the Oracle Cell avoids. They sent a report of it to the higher-ups, but they were not taken seriously. It turns out that the yellow substance is the same thing they used in filling the ampules. After the new types successfully make it to the HQ, they are accessed, and both are given indefinite leave. Later on, Shiksal meets with Amamiya in his office. There is also a third fellow inside the office. He appears to be one of Shiksal's former co-workers. They are trying to know the origin of the variant Vajra that the Divine Eaters encountered. They are able to find out that the Russian branch has a report on it. It was first sighted over there. They also discover that the monster killed Elisa's parents. Meanwhile, Elisa is in her room and she is still suffering from a devastating mental breakdown. Back to Shiksal, there is confusion as to why powerful Aragami are being drawn to the Far East. During Shiksal's conversation with his old co-worker, we learn that his name is Paler Sakaki. Shiksal tells Sakaki to take a loot at Lenka's Ark to see if it can be fixed or not. Later on, Lenka goes to the engineering department to ask Lika if she has finished checking his Ark. Lenka meets Sakaki in the workshop. Lika has the opportunity to introduce Sakaki to Lenka. She says Sakaki is the father of the Oracle technology. He is also the one who got the technology that created the arcs. Sakaki says he has checked Lenka's arc. He is able to find a pulse, but it is faint. This means that the arc is fixable. However, there is the issue concerning why the arc broke. The arc is created using the same Oracle cells that make up an Aragami. Basically, the arc is a man-made Aragami. It is the weapon that is able to tear apart fused Oracle cells. Sakaki had never seen an arc battered like his before. Sakaki adds that the arc can be controlled when it links with the Divine Eater's bracelet. The capabilities of the arc depend on the wielder. Sakaki decides to run another compatibility test on Lenka. Sakaki sees something in the data that blows his mind, but doesn't reveal it yet. Shortly afterward, Rindu tells Sakuya that he is going on a special assignment. He tells Sakuya to trust Lenka's judgment when he is not around. Later on, Lenka finds out that the first unit and the second unit are going out on a joint mission. He and Elisa will not be able to go because they are still on leave. Rindu is also not available because he has gone on a special mission. Lenka wishes them good luck on their mission. As they depart, Lenka enters the Situation Room and he asks Amamiya for permission to monitor the mission with them. Amamiya accepts for Lenka to join them. The team makes their way into an old stadium where there have been reports of Aragami. They get to the middle of the stadium and find some Aragami which they start to fight. Suddenly, the ground under them caves in and both units fall underground. Meanwhile, Rindu is heading to the site where Aegis is being constructed. The unit is left with two choices. Try to find their way underground or find a way back to the surface. Amamiya tells them to return to the surface, but Lenka says otherwise. He says it will be wise for them to advance underground and find an entrance. He is sure that there will be an entrance underground. They just need to find it before the place caves in completely. Amamiya is not ready to agree with Lenka, but Sakuya remembers what Rindu told her about trusting Lenka. She then tells Amamiya that Lenka's suggestion is worth a shot. Amamiya angrily tells the team to advance forward. The team follows Lenka's advice and they soon find a wall. Amamiya gives Lenka control of the mission and task to get the team out. He tells them to follow the wall until they find an entrance. They do this and they soon find an opening too. This amazes everyone listening and watching Lenka. As they proceed further, the Aragami is also in pursuit. The team wants to run, but Lenka tells them to lay an ambush for the monsters. They set up a pincer strategy and they are able to take out the monsters. Everyone returns to the HQ looking happy and thankful to Lenka for saving them. Even Soma and Amamiya are impressed with Lenka. Amamiya asks Lenka how he is so sure that they will find an entrance in the underground. He tells her that the same thing happened to him on his way to Fenrir. Before leaving, 
Hibari tells Lenka that the director will be holding a compulsory meeting later in the day. While discussing with Sakuya, Lenka accidentally drops his compass. She recognizes the compass from someone she knows. Sakuya leaves by telling Lenka that he has the same smile as a younger Rindu. Later on, Sakaki calls Lenka to the workshop to tell him something important. Meanwhile, Shiksal has started addressing the staff. On the other hand, Rindu has also snuck into Aegis. Sakaki tells Lenka that his compatibility with his arc was too strong, and this is the reason it broke. Shiksal is also telling the staff about the newly developed Aragami guiding device. It can lure Aragami to it. Rindu gets to a room inside Aegis and he discovers a big secret. Shiksal tells the staff that the devices will be installed at each point to lure Aragami depending on their species. They will focus on them and destroy them afterward. At the same time, Elisa is begging her doctor to do everything he can to take away her fear of Pita. Now in the workshop, Sakaki tells Lenka that his compatibility rate is very high and this caused him some damage. He only has a few years to live. After giving out all the pieces of information he needs to give to the staff, Shiksal declares that the day is the start of Operation Meteorite. A flashback scene shows Shiksal, Sakaki, and Aisha debating whether to make their findings public. They were in the middle of this when the earth shook, and several unknown protrusions sprouted out of the ground. The protrusions destroyed everything in their path. Aragami soon emerged from these. Now in the present day, Sakaki continues by telling Lenka that he has the choice to retire as a Divine Eater. However, he is not permitted to leave Fenrir. If he wishes to continue as a Divine Eater, Sakaki is ready to fix his arc for him. Lenka tells Sakaki to keep the information between them. Lika also knows about it, but it will remain confidential between the trio. Sakaki tells Lenka to think about it and give him an answer later. Meanwhile, Shiksal has found out that Rindu snuck into the Aegis Project site because the security camera caught him. Surprisingly, Shiksal orders a hit on Rindu. In another flashback scene, we see the three scientists blaming themselves for not reporting what they had seen sooner. However, the trio soon finds out that the higher-ups already used the technology which they found known as the bias factor on some of the lab buildings. The oracle cells avoid the bias factor and don't even go near it. This is the reason they are still standing. The trio started thinking about a way to weaponize the bias factor. Continuing with the present story, Amamiya gathers everyone to tell them their roles regarding Operation Meteorite. They will be divided into five units because there are five devices. He reads out the names of the team leaders, and Lenka is shocked when he finds out that he has been picked as one of the team leaders. Soma is appointed to be in Lenka's unit. Lenka finds Soma and tells him how honored he is to be his team leader. Soma doesn't concern himself with formalities and he just leaves. After Soma's departure, some of the personnel make fun of Lenka because Soma is on his team. They call Soma the Grim Reaper. Lenka is shocked by this because he doesn't know why they are calling Soma the Grim Reaper. Later on, Lenka asks Sakaki why Soma is being called the Grim Reaper. Sakaki refuses to answer and tells him to check the database instead. In another flashback scene, the three scientists are still looking for a way to turn the bias factor into a weapon to destroy the Aragami. Sakaki shows his friends the arc design he has. However, they need something to be able to control the arc remotely and keep it under control. Just then, Aisha suggests that they inject the bias factor into a human and let their body adapt to it. Sakaki says it is a brilliant idea, but they will need a lot of volunteers for this. Aisha cuts in and says the perfect way to administer it will be via the womb. It will be able to adapt far safer than a direct dosage, she says. She spills the beans and reveals that she is pregnant with Shiksal's baby. This makes her the perfect candidate for the experiment. Back in the present day, Lenka has pulled Soma's report. He finds out that Soma is Shiksal and Aisha's son. Aisha died while birthing Soma. Later on, Lenka asks Amamiya why she stepped down as Divine Eater. Amamiya says she doesn't believe that they will ever defeat the Aragami. However, she has the conviction that the next generation might be able to do so. This is because the Aragami emerges very easily. Soon afterward, the teams moved out to place the devices in the assigned locations. Lenka and his team get to where they are to place the guiding device. A group of Aragami arrives in the process, but Soma wipes them out in one sweep of attack. They set up the device and are about to leave when a bunch of Aragami emerges from the ground. Lenka finally understands what Amamiya meant. He is able to see with his own eyes how the monsters are born. The Aragami tries to get to the device, but the defense wall around the device stops them. The Aragami are relentless and they continue pushing the wall with the intent of destroying the device. Without hesitation, Soma jumps down from the chopper to engage the monsters. Soma is soon subdued by the Aragami and he is sure to be heading to his death. He remembers how everyone has always called him a Grim Reaper because he was the only one who survived amongst his peers. He is also blamed for the death of his mother. This is the reason Soma has been acting recklessly without the fear of death. Lenka realizes what Soma is going through, and he gets down to assist him. He manages to get Aragami to leave Soma and focus on him. 
Lenka then tells Soma to use his powerful attack to wipe out the Aragami at once. Soma freezes up because of his past trauma. Lenka manages to get to him when he tells him that he is not responsible for his mother's death. Soma picks himself up and wipes out the Aragami as usual. Some of the attack hits Lenka and he falls to the ground afterward. He later wakes up to see Soma beside him. Soma then explains the biology behind the births of the Aragami to him. He says you can't destroy Aragami unless you destroy their cores. And even if you destroy their cores, the scattered oracle cells will amass again and give birth to more Aragami. It is a cycle of despair. Lenka then encourages Soma. He says his mother gave birth to him as a sign of hope for humanity. He should continue being that till he is able to pass it to someone else. Shortly afterward, we see Elisa's doctor questioning her. He has her under the influence of a substance, and Elisa reveals the shelter that Rindu has been taking people who are rejected by Fenrir. Elisa's doctor then passes all the information to Shiksal. On the other hand, Lenka has gone to meet Sakaki. He wants to continue being a divine eater no matter what damage it does to him. He asks Sakaki to fix his arc for him. Meanwhile, Rindu is wondering if what he saw at Aegis is responsible for drawing powerful Aragami to the Far East. Before Dr. Oguruma finishes his session with Elisa, he swaps Pita's image with that of Rindu. He then tells Elisa that Rindu is her enemy and she needs to eliminate him because he is responsible for the death of her parents. Sakaki has also started fixing Lenka's arc and he is even using a more powerful material this time around. The next event took place 15 years ago. A family is denied access to Fenrir, a father, mother, and their daughter, Iroha. After the gates closed, they saw an abandoned baby in the mud. Just as they picked up the baby, Aragami arrived and attacked the others standing around. The family managed to escape with the baby. Iroha's father decides that they should keep the baby because he doesn't want to abandon him like Fenrir did to them. When it is time for them to pick a name, they leave it to their daughter to pick a name for the baby boy. She names him Lenka. Now in the present day, Lenka is required to undergo another compatibility test to be able to wield his new and refined arc. Back in the past, the boy Iroha and her family found has grown to be a teenager. Lenka's mother and plenty of others are sick and they need to get medical supplies for them. The disease has been spreading throughout the people living in the shelter. Lenka and her sister follow a different truck while their father follows another. They are to gather supplies and meet back at the shelter. While Lenka and his sister are gathering medical supplies, their group is attacked by Aragami. Lenka falls to the ground and freezes up. Iroha manages to get him off his knees so that they can escape before Aragami gets them. They make it to a stream where Iroha washes her brother's leg. She tells him a story to calm him down. Just then, Aragami arrives again and surrounds the duo. They are about to become Aragami's meal when Rindu arrives and eliminates the monsters. Lenka immediately falls in love with Rindu. Rindu escorts them back to the shelter. He informs Lenka's dad that he can test Lenka to see if he will be positive to be a Divine Eater. Fenrir now has a policy to accept the families of Divine Eaters. If Lenka is positive, his family will have the opportunity to join him. Lenka's father tells Rindu that he is not interested in whatever Fenrir has to offer again. They have proven themselves to be evil, and he doesn't want to associate with them again. After Rindu and Iroha's father are done discussing, Rindu prepares to take his leave. Lenka runs after him to tell him that he would like to be like him. Rindu then gives Lenka his compass. He says the compass will help guide his way also. Shortly afterward, Lenka comes down with the disease. The family is forced to make a hard choice. They only have a dose of medicine to save just one person. They have the choice to save their mother while Lenka dies. They have the choice to save Lenka while their mother dies. Surprisingly, the mother tells Iroha and her father to save Lenka instead. Lenka is tested for Divine Eater compatibility and he turns out positive. This is the reason Iroha's mother wants Lenka to live. Iroha and her father cry when they realize that their mother is going to die. Later on, she dies and her family buries her. Lenka's body is now okay too. Years later, Lenka has grown bigger. Iroha gives him a short jacket that her mother made for her. The shelter calls a meeting because they need fuel. The following morning, Lenka snuck out to find fuel. Iroha's father then tells Iroha that Lenka is now 15, this means he now has the capability to join the Divine Eater. They are still discussing this when Aragami arrives at the shelter. Lenka manages to get small fuel at all costs. He gets to the shelter to find it in ruins, scared that he already lost his father and sister. He soon finds his sister, and his joy knows no bounds. They find their father trapped under rubble. There is no way to get him out. The man then tells his children to leave and escape. They are going to Fenrir. Lenka doesn't know what Fenrir is and what they do. The duo runs away together as Aragami consumes their father. They make it to a bike, but Iroha gets scratched in the process of escaping. Iroha's wound starts to grow worse as they travel. Later on, Iroha falls to the ground because she has no strength to travel again. She tells Lenka to abandon her. She reveals to Lenka how they found him. He is adopted, 
but they have always counted him as their family. Iroha tells him to keep going north, and he will find Fenrir. She realizes that Lenka is not ready to leave her. She takes out her knife and cuts her own throat. Tears fall down Lenka's eyes as he runs away. He remembers all the precious time he has spent with his family. The determination to save everyone pushes Lenka till he makes it to Fenrir. This is how Lenka found his way to Fenrir. Now in the present day, Lenka is informed that his arc is now complete. His determination to save people has not changed. Rindu and Amamiya are out checking the status of the guiding device. After they are done, Amamiya asks Rindu to follow him because she has some things to ask him. She asks him about Aegis, and Rindu says the site is just like a manufacturing factory. The building where the duo is standing has their names inscribed on it. It seems Rindu, Amamiya, and Sakuya once lived in the old abandoned house. Amamiya has no chance to ask further questions because her attention is needed back at the HQ. Soon afterward, members are summoned from every branch of the world. They are to assist in the completion of Operation Meteorite. The flashback scene shows Sakaki and Shiksel having a discussion. Sakaki doesn't approve of what Shiksel and Aisha plan to do. He considers the act too morbid for his liking. He also says the procedure is too dangerous and he won't be partaking in it. Now in the present day, the team members are informed that the operation has been moved up. Rindu is happy to tell the unit that Elisa is now fine and she will be joining them. Just then, Elisa appears and greets everyone present. She looks unusually charismatic and obedient. She also tells the group that her fear of PETA has disappeared. Later on, the personnel are called to the briefing room for information concerning the operation. Amamiya tells Rindu that he will be in command of the forward base camp and in charge of supplies and reinforcement. However, Rindu rejects the position. He says Lenka is the perfect fit for the role. Rindu prefers to be on the front lines fighting and giving orders rather than from the base. Amamiya agrees and installs Lenka as the leader of the first unit. He is also the commander of the forward operating base. Rindu will be in command of Team A. The goal is to gather the cores of a thousand large type Aragami. The completion of Aegis depends on the success of the mission, she says. After the briefing, Lenka and his friends find out that Team A is in charge of fighting Vajra. Pita is a Vajra, and there is every possibility that they will encounter the deadly monster. Elisa doesn't seem to be scared as she voices out confidently that she will eliminate Pita if she encounters it. Soma is also determined to defeat the monster. He is very determined to protect everyone. Lenka leaves the group to attend the strategy meeting. Kuda asks him to join him at his house later and Lenka agrees. They visit Kuda's house together. They find his mother at home. Kuda's sister is also around this time. Later on, Kuda tells Sakuya to train him better than he is. Sakuya informs him that there are two types of arcs, the blade arcs and the gun types. Sakuya and Kauda are wielders of gun arcs. Their job is to protect the wielders of blade arcs while they are fighting. The new meteorite bullet that Fenrir developed will come in handy while battling the monsters. The bullets are made from the bias factor capable of destroying Aragami. On the other hand, Rindu is seen discussing with Sakuya. He tells Sakuya that he feels something off about the operation. With the way the two act around each other, it is evident that the duo have romantic feelings for each other. Soon afterward, it is time for the team members to move out and set up camp. Lenka finds Rindu and gives him the compass he once gave to him. However, Rindu returns the compass and tells him to give it to someone else who needs to find his way. The following morning, the eaters set out to hunt Aragami. The guiding devices are activated to bring the monsters together. Moments later, hordes of Aragami start to gather at the various locations of the devices. The soldiers launch a shower of meteorite rounds to weaken the Aragami. After this, the team jumps out of the chopper to engage the monsters. The personnel also use the method that was discovered by Lenka the monsters. They push the bias factor into their arc to put it in a frenzy mode. They are able to take down more Aragami this way. In the flashback scene, Aisha is seen in the labor room. She is finding it hard to deliver the baby. The doctors decide to resort to cesarean section. Just as they pick up the knife to touch Aisha's belly, Aragami's presence inside of her bursts open. Now in the present day, Shiksel sits in his office and activates a guiding device that appears to be in some sort of lake or river. Immediately he does this, the Aragami the Divine Eaters are fighting start to retreat. They start to head northwest. This comes as a shock to everyone, but Lenka soon finds out that the Vajras are headed for the shelter located by the dam. He tells Rindu and Rindo heads there immediately. Rindu tells the rest of the team to continue fighting the other Aragami in the vicinity. Back at the headquarters, Hibari and Amamiya are trying to figure out if the other devices have malfunctioned. They also ask for Sakaki's help. Back in the past, Shiksal stood up after previously passing out from the impact of Aisha blowing up. The Aragami has consumed and eliminated everyone in the room. 
Shiksal is safe because of the charm Sakaki sent to him earlier on. The charm contains traces of the bias factor. He looks around the room to find out that his son is crying on the floor. Soma is the only surviving being in the room aside from Shiksal. Returning to the present day, Amamiya and Hibari find out that the Vajras have started to converge on Rindu's location. The rest of the team is engaging the other monsters, and there is no one that can get to him very fast. Amamiya realizes that Lenka can get to him sooner than anyone else. She immediately sends Lenka after Rindo. Lenka's arc will be sent from the headquarters and sent to him on site. Lika and Sakaki quickly make some adjustments to the arc in under 30 seconds. Lenka boards a chopper and starts moving to Rindu's location quickly. At the same time, Pita has emerged from his hiding place and is preparing to go on a rampage too. Rindu is having a busy time with the Vajras, but he is still holding his head. Lika informs Amamiya that Lenka's Ark has been loaded onto a chopper and it will soon get to Lenka. Amamiya also tells the first unit to leave the battleground and provide a helping hand for Lenka and Rindu. Just then, Hibari finds out that someone hacked into the guiding device. That is the reason it is malfunctioning. Rindu is fighting hard, but he is now wounded. The Vajras are still much and they keep coming to his location. Lika has placed Lenka's Ark in a launch device. The device is launched to Lenka's coordinates. Lika tells Lenka that adjustments have been made to the Ark. In short, it is now more powerful than it was before. Lenka arrives at Rindu's location. At the same time, his Ark arrives. Lenka jumps out of the chopper to catch the Ark mid-air. The Ark is now very big, and it looks even more scary than before. Rindu is surrounded by the monsters already, but Lenka lands and eliminates them with the powerful blast emanating from his arc. Lenka easily wipes out the wave of Vajras that have previously surrounded Rindu. Even Rindu is very impressed at how powerful Lenka's arc is. Seconds later, another wave of Vajras appears. Shortly afterward, those at the headquarters are able to find out that there is another guiding device. The Vajras will keep coming unless they find it and destroy it. Rindu and Lenka are still battling the regular Vajras when the infamous Pita shows up. The regular Vajras clears the way for Pita to pass. This is the first time Rindu is coming across Pita. He throws a stun grenade at the monster, but he opens its wings and easily deflects the device. Pita comes at them, but Lenka is able to repel him with his arc. Pika escapes into the woods, and the duo chases after him. As he moves through the woods, Pita is able to influence the Aragami living in the trees and turns them against the duo. The trees grab Rindu and Lenka. This gives Pita the perfect chance to eliminate them. He is about to do so when Sakuya and the rest arrive. They shoot the monster to chase him back. Rindu is also happy to see Elisa, and he tells her not to act recklessly. He repeats his usual orders as the whole team stands in unison to fight the scary monster. Back at the HQ, Hibari was able to figure out that hacking was an inside job. It was carried out by Ogaruma. Amamiya takes the guards with him to arrest Ogaruma, but they can't find him. They go through Oguruma's desktop. They manage to find out that he has programmed Elisa to turn on Rindu. Rindu and the team are still fighting Pita when Elisa points her gun at Rindu. She would have killed Rindu if not for the words of encouragement that Rindu had once spoken to her. She sprays the bullets until Sakuya slaps her to snap her out of it. Elisa's fears return once more and she falls to her knees. Her hands start shaking and she begins to sob profusely. The trees grab Rindu and the rest. There is no way to escape, and Elisa is of no help. Lenka manages to get through to her. He reminds her that she is not weak, and she became a divine eater with the intention to protect the vulnerable. Elisa gets a hold of herself. She picks up her arc and frees her comrades from their bondages. She thanks Lenka for his help, and also apologizes to Sakuya for her misconduct. Just then, the team finds out that the Vajras have started moving to the dam. Rindu tells the team to move to the dam and leave Pita with him. Rindu wants them to protect the people at the shelter. Sakuya and the rest of the team are reluctant to leave Rindu with the deadly monster, but he assures them that he will be fine. As Rindu moves towards Pita to engage him, he tells Lenka to show the team the right path if they ever lose their way. Lenka and the rest of the unit move to the shelter. They need to find the device and destroy it immediately or else the Vajras will wipe out the shelter. Meanwhile, Pita has knocked Rindu to the ground. He gets closer to Rindu but steps on a trap Rindu has laid for him. Rindu attacks Pita with everything he has, and he tries to cut off Pita's head with his blade. The camera shifts away, and there are splashes of tomato sauce in the air. In a flashback scene, Shiksel is the one taking care of Soma. However, he is still depressed over the death of his lover. He poisons himself, but he is quickly discovered by one of the staff. He was taken to the hospital and he was resuscitated. Sakaki visits him at the hospital. Sakaki talks about the phenomenon known as the devouring apocalypse. He says there is a possibility that the Aragami will devour each other until there is one gigantic Aragami. It is rumored that it will then devour everything on Earth. When everything is gone, the Oracle Cell will disappear. 
The planet will reset to a state with no humans or origami. Sakaki says there is a possibility that Shiksal is still alive to help save humanity. From then on, Shiksal has been determined to save the planet. Back in the present day, Lenka and the unit are still looking for a way to take care of the Vajras when Pita shows up. This can only mean one thing. Rindu is dead. Rindu's bracelet is also seen in Pita's mouth. Back at the HQ, Amamiya finds out that the devices have started malfunctioning. The director gives her the permission to destroy the devices. They have reached their gathering quota already and there is no need to continue. He also orders Amamiya to locate Ogaruma as soon as possible. After the call with Amamiya, the director lays back on his chair and gives out an evil smile. He says he still needs the first unit after all. Back at the shelter, all of the team members have suddenly lost the will to fight after seeing that Rindu is dead. Soma gets angry and attacks without thinking carefully. Lenka stops because he might just get himself killed. Lenka is the only person still holding on to himself among all of them. The rest of the team members attack Pita, but they are all knocked to the ground. Sakuya picks up Rindu's bracelet and holds it tight. Just then, the girl from the shelter and three others show up. Lenka tells the girl and her group to help gather his comrades. The girl and her people get on it immediately. The rest of the unit starts to get a sense of themselves again when they see the girl and her people. They remember that their job is to protect the weak. Lenka tells them that Rindu gathered the people at the shelter so that they could be safe. It is their job to continue what Rindu started. After giving an electrifying speech, the team's spirit is lifted again. The people from the shelter tell the team that something dropped in the river some days ago. They believe that it must be the device that they are looking for. They point Soma in the right direction inside the water, and Soma jumps in to find the device and disable it. The rest of the team assembles and goes after the Vajras. Alyssa and Lenka are left to fight Pita. The fight with Pita proves to be a deadly one, as the two find it hard to hold out against the monster. Meanwhile, Soma has destroyed the device, and the Vajras have started turning away from the shelter. The only enemy left to defeat is Pita. During their battle with the monster, Lenka is able to figure out that it has a crack on Pita's right wing. Their target is now the right wing. The team combines all their weapons to hold down the monster. Lenka delivers a devastating blow that breaks off the wing. This doesn't stop Pita as this even gets him madder. His body starts to give out red glows. He knocks the rest of the team down and goes after Lenka. He injures Lenka fatally. Sakuya appears to be tired already. She is now doubtful that they can even defeat Pita. Lenka appears to be seriously injured, and he now has oracle cell erosion on his right arm extending to his neck. The team manages to stand up to deliver a last, desperate attack on the monster, but they are still knocked to the ground as usual. It seems the team only did what they did to buy time for Lenka. Pita turns back to see Lenka standing. He has used his arc to devour Pita's wing that got caught off. Lenka looks absolutely more dangerous than he was before. He comes at the monster and delivers a fine cut on his legs. Lenka jumps up and attacks Pita from the air. He pushes his blade into Pita's core. He uses all his strength, and in the process of doing so, his hair color changes to gold. He manages to push the blade through and destroys Pita's core. The monster is defeated, and Lenka falls to the ground because of exhaustion. Later on, Shiksel formally welcomes Sakaki to the Far East branch. He returns the tag Sakaki had previously given to him. Shiksal says he was able to use Sakaki's prototype to build an armored wall. Shiksal says he has derived a plan to save humanity. The Aegis Project is actually a launch pad for a rocket that will send people into space. This is in anticipation of the devouring apocalypse. After everything is gone, humans who have been sent to space will return to start a new life on Earth. Shiksal is also planning to cause the devouring apocalypse by himself. He has a giant guiding device that will attract Aragami and make them consume everything on Earth quickly. Shiksal's plan is to save a handful of humans while the rest perishes. Kakaki, on the other hand, believes that Aragami will evolve to a point where they will be able to communicate with humans. They might be able to coexist with humans if this happens. Shiksal believes one thing, while Kakaki believes the other. The race to see who is right begins between the duo. Shortly afterward, Shiksal informs the people that they have gathered enough cores needed to complete Project Aegis. He also talks about the continuing manhunt for Ogaruma. Unknown to everyone, Ogaruma was acting under Shiksal's orders. This is because he wants to be among the selected few that will be sent to space. A funeral is held for Rindu later on. In recognition of his new achievements, Lenka is appointed as the new captain of the unit. He gives his team members the same instructions Rindu usually gives them. As the season comes to an end, we see someone who appears to be Rindu running around the wastelands. At the same time, Rindu's arc at the headquarters slightly moves. At this point, we have reached the end of our video. If you like it, do not forget to put the like button and subscribe for more new videos.